a lot of people have asked, well, where did hepatitis C come from? And the answer is it was here all along, except we didn't call it hepatitis C until 1989. Prior to that, it was known as non-A, non-B hepatitis. And the majority of people who got hepatitis C, which was then non-A, non-B hepatitis, were people born between 1945 and 1965, the so-called birth cohort. And the reason that they got infected probably was mostly from blood transfusions and then also through sexual activity through the 60s and 70s. But the majority of people today who have hepatitis C were infected with what we then called non-A, non-B hepatitis somewhere back in the 70s or 80s. And then they start getting manifestations of the disease in the 2010, 2020 era because it takes about 20 to 30 years for the virus to start doing its thing in the liver and causing scarring and cirrhosis. Worldwide, right now, there's about 180 million people who are infected with hepatitis C. There's about three to four million in the United States alone. When you start thinking about that, there are not enough hepatologists. There's not enough infectious disease doctors to treat all these patients. And so what I think is going to happen over the next three to four years, as therapies become more widely available, hopefully as their cost comes down, that primary care providers will be treating hepatitis C very successfully. And all it's going to require is that provider become familiar with the new drugs and how they're used and have a little bit of a refresher course on liver disease and cirrhosis and how to recognize cirrhosis and de especially decompensated cirrhosis, get those people to the hepatologist. But for everybody else, this could be an outpatient, readily managed primary care disease. And it's a lot of fun to treat because you take somebody from having an illness to being cured 100%. And that's really exciting. So I think the primary care docs will be in this game within the next two to three years. Some of the hepatologists don't really, they're not too, I'm not saying they're not excited, they're, they're dubious. Yeah. But, but I, I just think it's, they're not, it's just that's been their domain for so long that they don't necessarily um, catch the vision. But having been involved in HIV for as long as I have, I can easily see where hepatitis C will become a primary care disease, and it should be. So what should a primary care doc know about hepatitis C? I think there's really three things. One, understand that the majority of people who have hepatitis C were those people born between 1945 and 1965, the so-called birth cohort. Two, remember that it takes about 20 to 30 years of infection before the virus does its main damage to the liver. And three, that prior to the current time, there really wasn't great therapy for hepatitis C. It was toxic, it required injections. But now, since 2014 onward, we have these so-called direct acting agents that when used in combination, no injections at all, you can have cure of most strains of hepatitis C in a matter of 12 weeks. And my view is that in the next two to three years, that length of time will even be shorter. So the birth cohort, those born between 1945, the timing of hepatitis C disease development over 20 to 30 years, and the fact that new drugs are currently available that cure it 95 to 100 percent of the time, those are the things that primary care providers need to be aware of. And we should be testing all of our patients, really, for the presence of hepatitis C. And if they're positive, consider them for therapy. One of the most common questions I've been getting since these new drugs have come out is, what do you do about a healthcare worker who's had a needle stick? Because historically, we haven't been able to do much to prevent hepatitis C. And the first thought that people have is, wow, if somebody has a needle stick, I can treat them with these new agents and prevent them from ever getting hepatitis C. In reality, the guidelines are gonna probably not recommend this for the following reason. We will follow somebody after a needle stick to see if they develop hepatitis C. And if they develop it, then we would probably watch them for about six to eight weeks to see if they clear it on their own. And if they don't, then we'll treat them because the treatments are so effective and the damage from that initial infection is so minimal that you can not waste the money treating everyone who's had an exposure to prevent an infection that's only gonna occur one out of four times. 
watch, see who gets infected. About 15 to 20 percent of people will cure, will clear it on their own, cure themselves. And for the remaining people, no big deal. Just treat them after they have the established infection. It'll be gone in somewhere between 8 and 12 weeks. That's the end of it. One question that comes up a lot is, once you've cured someone, can they become infected again? And the answer is absolutely yes. It doesn't happen that often. But if someone has been cured of hepatitis C and then has another exposure, say a year later, either sexual exposure or intravenous drug use, uh, sharing needles, that person who was cured can be reinfected with another acute infection and another hepatitis C chronic infection. We need to be vigilant for that. But in the big picture, most people who are cured don't get reinfected. But some people do, and we need to have our eye out for that. The big picture message from this is that it may be difficult to develop a hepatitis C vaccine. Because if someone has had hepatitis C, got cured of it, and then can be reinfected, doesn't bode well for a vaccine protecting against infection because there's no better stimulus to the immune system than a prior infection trying to prevent against a new one. And a vaccine can't do any better than a prior infection. So those are some small points that uh, come up kind of often in the course of conversation about hepatitis C.